Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to our Guru Maharaj. Um, today, Guru Maharaj is not going to join. Um, so I just requested um, Her Grace Sri, Ma Sri Devi Mataji to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam um, as we are continuing the series of uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. I think your voice is not audible. Or is it not it audible? Suddenly, it suddenly just stopped. Shriti, we cannot hear you when you're talking. Let me take over, Shrimati. Is that okay? So that you, while you fix your thing, okay. So, but, um, Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance. So, all the Prabhupada, all glories to Chandramali Swami, would like to welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. Um, this morning, we will be discussing on Chit, um, sorry, Shrimad Bhagavatam, Kanto 1. Chapter 9, I believe it's verse 37, Sri Devi, right? 27. 27, thank you. And the chapter is entitled The Passing of Bhishma Dev and the Presence of Sri Krishna, Lord Krishna. And um, as Srimati said, that uh, Maharaj could not make it, so she had to ask Mata Sri Devi to cover the class. And please um, continue. It's all yours, Mother Sri Devi. Please um, roll with it. Thank you, Anasuya. And thank you also, Srimati, for the screen share. So we have the words up there. I hope everyone can see the words. Is everyone able to see it? Please just nod your heads. Yes. OK, great. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So thank you all very much. My humble obeisances to all of you. Thank you for coming on the call. We are here on Shibad Bhagavatam, as Ansuya Mataji said. Bhishma Dev passing away in the presence of Lord Krishna. What a glorious passing away. So this is verse number 27. And the background is like this. Bhishma Dev on his deathbed is giving instructions to Yudhishthir Maharaj on all aspects of statesmanship. He's instructing him as a future king on how to conduct himself by reminding him of all the various duties that a king has to, be, has to perform. So it's a very instructive verse. So just listen up and it goes like this. Dana dharman, raja dharman, moksha dharman, vibhagashaha, stri dharman, bhagavad dharman, samasa vyasa yogataha. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. He then explained by divisions. Acts of charity, dramatic activities of a king, and activities for salvation. Then he described the duties of women and devotees, both briefly and extensively. Purport to give charity is one of the householder's main functions, and he should be prepared to give in charity at least 50% of his hard earned money. A brahmachari or student should perform sacrifices. A householder should give charity, and a person in the retired life or in the renounced order should practice penances and austerities. Both are the general functions of all the ashrams or orders of life on the path of self-realization. In the brahmachari life, the training is sufficiently important so that one may understand that the world as property belongs to the Supreme Lord, the personality of Godhead. No one, therefore, can claim to be the proprietor of anything in the world. Therefore, in the life of a householder, which is a sort of license for sex enjoyment, one must give in charity for the service of the Lord. 
everyone's energy is generated or borrowed from the reservoir of energy of the Lord. Therefore, the resultant actions of such energy must be given to the Lord in the shape of transcendental loving service for him. As the rivers draw water from the sea through the clouds and again go down to the sea, similarly, our energy is borrowed from the supreme source, the Lord's energy, and it must return to the Lord. That is the perfection of our energy. The Lord, therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita says that whatever we do, whatever we, whatever we undergo as penance, whatever we sacrifice, and whatever we eat or whatever we give in charity must be offered to him, the Lord. That is the way of utilizing our borrowed energy. When our energy is utilized in that way, our energy is purified from the contamination of material inebriages. And thus we become fit for our original natural life of service to the Lord. Haribo! Raj Dharma is a great science. Unlike modern diplomacy, political supremacy, the kings were trained systematically to become munificent and not merely be tax collectors. They were trained to perform different sacrifices only for the prosperity of the subjects. To lead the prajas to the attainment of salvation was a great duty of the king. The father, the spiritual master, and the king are not to become irresponsible in the matter of leading their subjects to the path of ultimate liberation from birth, death, diseases, and old age. When these primary duties are properly discharged, there is no need of government by the people of the people. In modern days, the people in general occupy the administration by the strength of manipulated votes. But they are never trained in the primary duties of the king, and that is also not possible for everyone. Under the circumstances, the untrained administrators play havoc to make the subjects happy in all respects. On the other hand, these untrained administrators gradually become rogues and thieves and increase the taxation to finance a top-heavy administration that is useless for all purposes. Actually, the qualified brahmanas are meant to give direction to the kings for proper administration in terms of the scriptures like the Manu Samhita and Dharma Shastras of Parashat. A typical king is the ideal of the people in general. And if the king is pious, religious, chivalrous, and munificent, the citizens generally follow him. Yadyad Acharati Sheshtas. Such a king is not a lazy, sensuous person living at the cost of the subject, but alert always to kill thieves and dacoits. The pious kings were not merciful to dacoits and thieves in the name of nonsensical ahimsa on violence. The thieves and dacoits were punished in an exemplary way so that in the future, no one would dare commit such nuisances in an organized form. Such thieves and dacoits were never meant for administration as they are now. The taxation law was simple. There was no force, no encroachment. The king had a right to take one-fourth of the production made by the subject. The king had a right to claim a fourth of one's allotted wealth. One would never grudge parting with it because due to the pious king and religious harmony, there was enough natural wealth, namely grains, fruits, flowers, silk, cotton, milk, jewels, minerals, etc. And therefore, no one was materially unhappy. The citizens were rich in agriculture and animal husbandry, and therefore, they had enough grains, fruits, and milk without any artificial need of soaps and toilet cinemas and bars. <laughs> Strange that Srila Prabhupada writes that. The king had to see that the reserved energy of humanity was properly utilized. Human energy is meant not exactly for fulfilling animal propensities, but for self-realization. The whole government was specifically designed to fulfill this particular purpose. As such, the king had to select properly the cabinet ministers, but not on the strength of voting background. The ministers, military commanders, even ordinary soldiers were all selected by personal qualification. And the king had to supervise them properly before they were appointed to their respective posts. The king was especially vigilant to see that tapasvis, or persons who sacrificed everything for disseminating spiritual knowledge, were never disregarded. 
The king knew well that the supreme personality of Godhead never tolerates any insult to his unalloyed devotees. Such tapasvis were trusted leaders even of the rogues and thieves who would never disobey the orders of tapasvis. The king would give special protection to illiterates, helpless, and widows of the state. Defense measures were arranged previous to any attack by the enemies. The taxing process was easy, and it was not meant for squandering, but for strengthening the reserve fund. Soldiers were recruited from all parts of the world, and they were trained for special duties. As far as salvation is concerned, one has to conquer the principles of lust, anger, unlawful desires, avarice, and bewilderment. To get freedom from anger, one should learn how to forgive. To be free from unlawful desires, one should not make plans. By spiritual culture, one is able to conquer sleep. By tolerance only can one conquer desires and avarice. Disturbances from various diseases can be avoided by regulated diets. By self-control, one can be free from false hopes, and money can be saved by avoiding undesirable association. By practice of yoga, one can control hunger, and worldliness can be avoided by culturing the knowledge of impermanence. Dizziness can be conquered by rising up, and false arguments can be conquered by factual ascertainment. Talkativeness can be avoided by gravity and silence. And by prowess, one can avoid fearfulness. Perfect knowledge can be obtained by self-cultivation. One must be free from lust, avarice, anger, dreaming, etc. to actually attain the path of salvation. As far as the women class are concerned, they are accepted as a power of inspiration for men. As such, women are more powerful than men. Mighty Julius Caesar was controlled by a Cleopatra. Such powerful women are controlled by shyness. Therefore, shyness is important for women. Once this control valve is loosened, women can create havoc in society by adultery. Adultery means production of unwanted children known as Varna Shankar who disturb the world. The last item taught was the process of pleasing the Lord. We are all eternal servants of the Lord. And when we forget this essential part of our nature, we are put into material conditions of life. The simple process of pleasing the Lord for the householders especially is to install the deity of the Lord at home. By concentrating on the deity, one may progressively go on with the daily routine work. Worshipping the deity at home, serving the devotee, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, residing in the holy place, and chanting the holy name of the Lord are all inexpensive items by which one can please the Lord. Thus, the subject matter was explained by the grandfather to his grandchildren. Om Ajnana Tivirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Udmilitam Nena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutali Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhari Shiva Sadikaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This is such a power packed purport that every paragraph is loaded, you know, loaded with so much pure transcendental knowledge. And Srila Prabhupada makes some really intriguing points as well as very, very powerful instructions through this purport. So listen up. <laughs> so he starts off by saying to give charity is one of the householder's main functions. Because of the three ashrams, the Grihastha ashram is the one that deals most with the material energy because they have to earn money. In fact, the Grihastha ashram supports the other three ashrams. Brahmacharis, Panaprastas, and Sannyasis are the renounced order and therefore they do not engage so much with the material energy. They are serving the Lord in more direct ways. Grihasthas, therefore, have to engage so much with the material energy and therefore they have to purify themselves by two very important principles. One is deity worship and one is giving in charity. This way, their earnings are purified and they also develop detachment 
from earning that money and feelings of possessiveness, greed, avarice, proprietorship, etc., etc. One becomes more and more purified and detached by following the principles of every ashram. So what does a brahmachari do? He should perform sacrifices. And what is the greatest sacrifice? Tapasya, chanting the holy names, engaging in service, offering everything to Krishna. These are the sacrifices for this day and age. Householder should give in charity and a person in the renounced order should practice even more. That means penances and austerity. So these are the general functions. Why do we need to do these things? To understand the simple basic principle that we are not the proprietor, enjoyer, controller of anything. That position is Krishna's. And this is beautifully explained in verse 5, 29 of the Bhagavad Gita, known as the peace formula verse, where Krishna is declaring only one who understands who I am and that I am the enjoyer of all sacrifices finds peace from the pangs of material nature. Okay, so we may think, oh, what about me? I have this house, I have this, but it is given to you for the time being, and you will part from it sooner or later. So you are what? You're merely a temporary caretaker of what has been given to you, whether it's children, whether it's a house, whether it's a library, whether it's wealth, whether it's position, whether it's prominent, whatever it may be, it is coming to us from the Supreme Lord, and it will go back to the Supreme Lord. As the Bible also says, the good Lord giveth, and the good Lord taketh away. <laughs> There's a very beautiful song in Sanskrit, actually, Srila Prabhupada also uh, mentions it. It's called Bhaja Govindam. It's, uh, the legend goes that Adi Shankaracharya composed this beautiful song in that he especially says, Mahapuru Dhana Jana Yauvana Garvam Harati Nimesha Kala Sarva. Don't be so proud of your wealth, useful position. In a second, time will take away everything. So don't be so proud of what you have because within seconds it will all be gone. Time will fly very quickly and the time will come to give up everything. At that time you can't carry anything with you anyway. <laughs> so working with this realization that I am simply a caretaker and therefore whatever I have has to be used in the service of the Lord brings about peace, brings about detachment from the material energy and greater attachment to the Lord. And this is the attachment we want because we will not be able to give up the lower taste without acquiring a higher taste. Param Drishtva Nivartante 259, in the second verse, uh, second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains that only when we get a higher taste, we will be able to give up the lower taste. And that is why this process of purification is so important for us. So that actually become more and more situated in what? Our natural life of service to Krishna. Because that's our eternal identity. Jivera Swarupoy, Vitera Krishna Das. My eternal identity is simply this. I am servant of Krishna, period. If someone shakes you awake in the middle of the night and says, who are you? My answer should be, I am an eternal servant of Krishna. That's it. <laughs> but right now, we are so much caught up with the material energy, we are very strongly identifying with our body. I am a woman. I am Indian. I am a doctor. I am a pediatrician. I am this. I am that. I have this position. I have this. But those are all external. Those are all external to who we really are. Actually, His Holiness Bhakti Tita Swami, I'm inspired to say this because we have Anasuya here. In the very last stages when he was winding up his earthly pastimes, he says, now I want to go deep into who I really am. I want to forget that I am Bhakti Tita Swami, the spiritual master, that I am GBC, that I am the high chief of Wari tribe because he was coronated as king of the Wari tribe. I want to forget all these external designations and I want to go deep into my relationship as the eternal loving servant of Radha Krishna. I will no longer interact 
with others on that level, but I will go deep into my own internal bhajan. And he did that. He showed by example that how deeply he was connecting with Radha and Krishna. I will relate those pastimes at another point, but this is the point I'm trying to make that connecting with who we really are will only be possible on the level of pure devotional service. So we must strive for that position because we want to attain what we have lost, our position as loving servitors with Krishna in the spiritual world. So this is the way to go about it. So when I just let me highlight the last sentence of this first paragraph, when our energy is utilized in that way, our energy is purified from the contamination of material inebriates, and thus we become fit for our original natural life of service to the Lord. So Krishna Prabhupada is outlining so beautifully everything that is required for us to purify our life at all levels for all Asha. Now, Bhishma Dev is talking about Raj Dharma. Because remember, every class, every vana, every ashram has a particular special role to play. And what is the role of the king? If you look at Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.18, it is Lord Rishabh Dev's uh, instructions to his sons. And there is a very famous verse that Srila Prabhupada would often quote. He said, one must never become a spiritual master, a father, a mother, a leader, a spiritual, um, a demigod, a worshipable demigod, uh, a husband also is included, unless and until one can deliver one's dependence from the cycle of birth and death. Such a grave responsibility is given to any leader, any head of state, any, and the king is considered to be the father of all the subjects. So, you, you may say, where is the word king? But the king is the father of all the subjects. So it's covered in this verse because father is mentioned. So what is the role of the father? They had to tra systematically train their dependents to get out of the cycle of birth and death. That means they must be exemplary themselves. So how do the kings train? They were trained to become very charitable, to become very beneficent, to uphold the dharma for all the classes of society to really be like the father taking care of his children. That was how the king felt towards his uh, subjects. And the subjects were not there for, to be exploited, to be taxed to death, to be extorted of all the hard-earned money so that the king would enjoy. No, that tax was meant to enhance the prosperity of the kingdom, to provide more to the citizens, to make sure the streets, roads, drinking water, wells, gardens, parks, food, granary, everything was full so that the citizens had no stress, anxiety, and worry for their daily needs. They didn't have to worry about it. The father, the king, would take care of all those things. So, Srila Prabhupada writes over here beautifully, when these primary duties are properly discharged, there is no need of government by the people, for the people, etc. This is all happening nowadays by what? Strength of votes. The person who can capture the maximum number of votes by paying money, by hiring people, by advertising. We have the latest example of this Donald Trump. What did he do? Just filled his own pockets after coming to power. That's all he did. And now all that is coming out. He's being implicated in so many court cases and everything. But this is the story of today's leaders, so-called leaders. They are rogues and thieves in you know. That's all. And all they do is extort money from people to line their own pockets. But this is not the role of a king. A king is meant to lead his subjects on the path of self-realization. And he is aided and advised by whom? A very qualified, highly intelligent class of people, the Brahmana class who were his ministers. And their only business was to give Shastric advice because they were very well versed in all those things. They live very simply. Like Chanakya Pandit, he was an advisor to a very great king. Uh, and yet, he lived in a simple hut. He didn't want any opulences. So the Brahmana class lives very simply, but they advise the king on how to govern in tricky situations, what decisions to give. And so the king was not just sitting there decorated with a throne and enjoying silks and finery and everything. He had a very, very responsible position because he had to provide materially 
and he had to guide spiritually his praja or his subjects on the path of realization. So the pious kings were not merciful to those who strayed and inflicted harm on the other citizens. Over here, you see, the thieves and decoys were punished in an exemplary way so that others were deterred. There was no mercy given unnecessarily to those who killed others, who robbed others, who exploited others, who created havoc in society. They were punished in a way which was a strong deterrent to others not to disturb the innocent sections of society. Nowadays, we have all this do away with capital punishment. Oh, let us be merciful to them. Let us not act the way they act. But then what? That person is going to have to pay the price in his next life, in his next life, somewhere along the way, a life for a life. So that's not really a solution. The solution is Krishna consciousness, but that will come by Krishna's mercy. How were the people taxed? They would never grudge. Because only one fourth of what one earned was taken by the king. And that was given happily and willingly because the citizens had all their needs met. They were not kept, you know, starving, exploited, stressing for every single expense like we are doing today. We are so stressed because of money. It's a huge problem. Anxiety due to money is a very big issue in today's world. But there was enough for everyone. There was enough wealth, there was enough milk, there were jewels, there was silk cloth, there was all the things that people needed to live happily and nicely. No one was materially unhappy. See, here Srila Prabhupada is saying no one was materially unhappy. The citizens were rich in agriculture and animal husbandry, and therefore they had enough grains, fruits and milk without any artificial need of soaps and toilets, cinemas and bars. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how Srila Prabhupada is writing that? So, this is how the king is meant to behave. And he had enormous respect for those who had become pure devotees of the Lord. The tapasvis who had sacrificed everything for disseminating spiritual knowledge. The king who would, everyone would bow down to the king when they entered into the assembly where the king was seated on his throne very royally. But when a tapasvi, a muni, a sage, a rishi, who was well-versed in pure devotional service entered, the king would get up, bow down, offer a seat of honor, wash the person's feet, offer nice sweet words, offer kind you know, praise, you know, glorify and honor this person and say, is all well with you? My Lord, you have graced me by coming to my kingdom. In what way can I serve you? May my home be comfortable for you. Like this, they would offer themselves offices because they knew that the pure devotees of the Lord have come to bless them or if something is wrong, to correct them, to give, to bring about welfare for the king and for others. They were not afraid. They were in fact honoring the pure souls. Today's society, Everyone wants to run away from sadhus because they think, oh, I'll have to give donation, I'll have to do this, I'll have to do that. But no, the king would actually welcome the sadhus. He would want the sadhus to come to his kingdom, to bless his kingdom. And how would uh, the king give protection? By making sure that the weak and the helpless, that means all the sections of society were taken care of. There are five classes of society that need protection. Women, children, elderly, cows, and brahmanas. These are considered the vulnerable sections of society, and the king would make all arrangements to take care of those who cannot take care of themselves. See how noble, such a noble task. And this was the noble class of men who would do it. In general, everyone learned that one must conquer the principles of lust, anger, greed, avarice, pride, illusion. Why? Because the king was following the path of dharma, and so he taught by example. Srila Prabhupada writes, yad yad I mean, Krishna speaks, and Srila Prabhupada gives this purport. Yad yad tad tad pramanam kurute lokas tad anuvartate. Whatever action a great man performs, common men follow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary act, all the world pursues. So this was the position and stature of a king. He led by example. And therefore, everyone knew that this is what is the meaning of human form of life. 
and all varnas and all ashrams were nicely organized and they would practice yoga. Hmm? Everyone knew the importance of bhakti yoga and they practiced the principles of religion without breaking them. Now, Srila Prabhupada talks about the women class. They are a power of inspiration for men. They are more powerful than men and therefore they have to remain chaste and modest in their dealings, keep their dignity, keep their self-respect. And once a woman is unable to do this, then she becomes very prone to being misled into adultery. In fact, Arjuna objects to the war. You remember in the very first chapter, he is uh, protesting to Krishna saying, how can I do this? If I kill all the husbands of all these ladies, then who will protect them? And they will become prone to degradation and we will have unwanted population in the world because from adultery comes unwanted progeny. Let me just share that screen. Those are four very beautiful verses which I pulled up for you. Okay, here we go. Text number 40 of chapter one. When irreligion is prominent in the family of Krishna, the women of the family become polluted. And from the degradation of womenhood, O oh descendant of Krishna, comes unwanted progeny. An increase of unwanted population causes hellish life, both for the family and for those who destroy family tradition. The ancestors of such corrupt families fall down because the performances for offering them food and water are entirely stopped by the evil deeds of those who destroy the family tradition and thus give rise to unwanted children. All kinds of community projects and welfare activities are devastated. So you see how many times Srila Prabhupada is saying, unwanted progeny. Here he says, unwanted population. Here he says, unwanted children. Why? Because this is coming about because of degradation of women. And therefore, women need protection by the elderly members of the family so that they are not exploited by the other people who may want to use that woman for their own personal gain. And that happens all the time. All the time. Women are very easily misled because their hearts are very soft and very vulnerable. And they're very open to anyone who comes along and speaks sweet words and tries to convince them that they're well-wisher, but the intent is different. And so therefore, they fall into bad association and get exploited. And then we have unwanted population and it's a very miserable state. As Srila Prabhupada said, the man just walks away. She's left with the baby. She has to beg money from the government and live a very pathetic life actually. This is happening so much in today's world, so much that it is unbelievable what, what is going on. So you might say, how is it that women are supposed to be shy? Here I am preaching. What is this, Mataji? You're supposed to be shy. <laughs> Why are you out there preaching? So Srila Prabhupada clarified this. He said that be like a lion when it comes to preaching and be like a lamb at home. Unfortunately, we are like lions in the house and lambs outside. <laughs> but this is not what is meant. What is meant by shyness means not that you hide under the bed and don't come out and don't speak anything. In fact, we are meant, each and every one of us must speak about Krishna consciousness. What is meant by shyness here is that a woman must keep her distance, not allow others to become familiar, must keep her dignity, modesty, chastity, this is what is being explained by the word shyness. Not that, you know, you put a gungat over your head and hide your face and never come out and face the world. That's not what is meant by the word shyness over here. And the very last item Bhishma Dev spoke of was the process of pleasing the Lord. Now, in Nectar of Devotion, there are five very potent items of devotional service, which is again mentioned over here. Worshipping the deity at home, serving the devotee, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, residing in the holy place, and chanting the holy name of the Lord are all inexpensive items by which one can please the Lord. So this is how Grandfather Bhishma very lovingly, very kindly, very compassionately, and with great delight in his heart, he offered all these instructions and advice to Yudhishthir Maharaj, who had won that kingdom, who was going to be the king, who was going to be the leader. 
and he wanted to impart all this knowledge so that his beloved grandson would perform his duties very nicely and thus please the Supreme Lord. So see how much we have been given now through these purports so that we can conduct our lives nicely. We can organize society nicely because this Krishna consciousness movement, Srila Prabhupada said, is the movement which will save the world in its darkest hour. And hey, it's pretty dark already now, isn't it? <laughs> we can see what is happening in the world today, which is a very, very precarious condition for humankind. I mean, just think, this unleashing of this Ukraine war, you know, poor innocent people butchered unnecessarily, aggression unnecessarily, just to satisfy the lust and greed of one political person of another country. It is all unlawful, immoral, unethical, illegal, and completely unacceptable by men and women of religious principles. This is not a religious war. This is just a war based on greed and avarice to grab another's property, kingdom, resources, and exploit them. And so the price will have to be paid. In turn, they will also suffer. And what is this suffering going to lead to more suffering? So you see what a vicious cycle this is. And so Krishna consciousness is the answer. We have to wake people up and say, hey, wake up. You're not the body, you're spirit soul. And you're meant to use this human form of life to get out of the cycle of birth and death and not perpetuate your misery and suffering. Manava Janma Dadadu, your human form of life is very, very valuable. Don't squander it. Don't waste your time unnecessarily. Come onto the path of bhakti yoga, make your life perfect, and then help others make their life perfect especially those born in the holy land of India. There is a very special responsibility and mandate given by Lord Chaitanya himself. He says, Bharat bhumite manushya janma hoilo jar, janma sarthak kari karo paro ka. And Srila Prabhupada in one lecture, he was so strong. He said, Indians are not meant for exploiting others. You make your life successful and help others to make their life successful. This is a very important thing. We should not forget everyone, everyone who comes to Krishna consciousness must take this as a mandate that I am a cultural ambassador of Krishna consciousness. I am an emissary for Srila Prabhupada's mission of saving this world. I am a representative of my spiritual master in all my dealings, not just when I'm in the temple with all devotees, but in the railway station, at the bus stop, at the airport, at the grocery store, everywhere. I must behave like a devotee and I must show by example what it is to be kind, to be patient, to be tolerant, to be Krishna conscious and to make the atmosphere around me a little better simply by my actions, by my behavior. So we have a very, very important role to play, each and every one of us, because we have come to Krishna consciousness, which is a very rare, very special good fortune. Srila Prabhupada said, you have become fortunate. Now go and help the unfortunate to become fortunate. So see, we have such a wonderful gift and we want to share it with the world. So thank you all for listening very patiently. I will stop here and we can open up for questions. I hope that this was helpful. Um, please forgive me if I have said or not clarified something or displeased you in some way. I hope I can do better with your prayers and blessings next time. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I think Shishimati is still um, not audible, sounds like it. Where's Shrimati? Shrimati, we cannot hear you for some reason. Can you sort of log off and log on again, maybe? That will work? I don't know. So we can open up for questions. Thank you so much, Sri Devi, for such a wonderful class. That is definitely a power pack class. I have to say that 
as you were reading, I said each verse can either be one class in itself, each, each paragraph can be one class by itself or a seminar in its own way, you know, it's really far back. Amazing, because each purport, if we were to dissect it, there are a lot of hidden uh, lessons, I feel, in each one of them. So thank you Absolutely. so much for giving us the class here. Um, would like to ask devotees, if you have any questions, any comments, any clarification, even a takeaway would be very, very nice. It's always nice to share a takeaway so that we know if you were paying attention or not. So I like to, to do that. Yes, Namrata Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to our dear Guru Maharaj, all glories to the assembled devotees. So Mataji, yes, definitely a power pack class. Um, there were a lot of takeaways uh, about charity, about uh, uh, what to do when a person retires, then uh, about um, what is the responsibility of a father, a king, uh, then about uh, the economic, uh, you know, uh, welfare, lot of things, lot of things. I think this is really uh, a class which, especially the purpose is definitely again, uh, after yesterday's purpose, this uh, purpose is again, which should be read again and again, I think to remind us um, uh, what we should do. And uh, I'm thinking of the questions right now, but uh, as Anseya Mataji said, one takeaway from the class is, uh, I really like the point when you mentioned that even if in the middle of the night somebody is waking you up, you should only say, I am the servant of Krishna. <laughs> That's it, nothing else. <laughs> okay. So thank you for the class, wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Namrata, for paying attention and for really absorbing yourself because as you rightly said, this is such a power packed purport that every um, paragraph, Anasya mentioned that we can do a seminar on it. What to speak of a class, a seminar. So thank you for being so attentive and really trying to absorb the message. I really appreciate that. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Mataji, now we're able to hear He's you. He's here! <laughs> <laughs> we missed your voice, Srimati, uh, really. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Srimati. Please accept my glories. All yes, glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to our wonderful Gurudev. And all glories Please. to you. <laughs> Please accept my humble obeisances, Mataji. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the nice class. Um, I have a question um, where you were saying about tapasya. So austerity, um, so we know that um, we, uh, if we do a little austerity to, uh, to Krishna, um, we'll get purified and uh, we'll be advancing in Krishna consciousness. But the thing is, uh, even though how many years passed, um, this austerity is very difficult, <laughs> especially waking up early and, uh, um, and uh, be strict in um, the sadhana. Uh, so yeah mataji so so is there any chance to improve um, in that area or like we'll be like that only i don't know i'm thinking sometimes <laughs> i'll become very hopeless in that situation in that area <laughs> yes yes sometimes you think oh my gosh when will my japa ever improve when will i ever be able to wake up you know nicely and chant early in the morning etc etc and you know this is this is why we need the association of devotees this is why we need to hear this is why we need classes this is why we need to hear come to retreats <laughs> to get that boost you know from Guru Maharaj to be in the presence of a pure devotee is very powerful for our spiritual life the effects last for months so we get such a powerful push upwards you know so we want to take advantage because like I said before also by ourselves it's so hard you know we are so weak and Maya is so strong so all by ourselves we don't have so much power but when we come together and when we encourage one another, when we share what's going on and have a mentor guide us to help us to 
help us to move to that next level. All these are aids for us to push past our own inertia, anarthas. You know, we have so many lifetimes of being associated with the material energy. So it's not so easy. And let me tell you this, you may even attain a very strong sadhana routine and you will lose it after some time. I'll tell you this for a fact because it happened to me. I was so very fixed. I must get up from Mangalati. I must go to the temple. I must chant my round. And for many months, years, I could actually do that. Wake up early from Mangalati, go to the temple, chant my round in Brahma Murta, attend the morning prayer. Then suddenly things in my life changed. I was struggling to wake up from Mangalati. I was struggling to go to the temple. It was all to make me humble because maybe I had become very proud that I am a Mangalati person. <laughs> I wake up early. And so Krishna wanted to show me that this is not the way, you know. One must learn humility. And you can be struggling sometimes, even after attaining, you know, a so-called high level of proficiency. Krishna will humble you by pulling you down. So what's more important is whatever level we are at to say, Krishna, please help me. I'm really helpless against the material energy, but you, my dear Lord, are all powerful and you can help me. So really trying to connect devotionally from the heart with Krishna will help us to break through our bad habits and bad patterns of behavior and you know spiritual practices, and move, which is not easy. It's a daily struggle. We struggle at every level. You know, you will move past one level of anarthas and there's another layer of anarthas waiting. <laughs> so we cannot say, ah, I've attained perfection. I've made it. <laughs> Never. Because always there's something else. So don't feel discouraged in every situation. Just think, Srimati, where were you five years ago? And where you are today? So don't let, uh, you know, minor setbacks or even a feeling of, oh, I have not made it to this level, whatever your idea is, and now here I am at this level. Whatever level you are at doesn't matter. We are all plodding along. So simply pray to Krishna, for today, let me do my best, Krishna. Please help me. And please help me to move to the next level. If you so desire. Please allow me to do my best for today. Take one day at a time. Is that okay? Yes, Mataji, yeah. Yes, ma definitely. Yeah. Yes, Mataji. Even uh, Guru Maharaj said once, pray to your Jagannath. <laughs> Please help me serve you better. Or, um, yeah. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you. And uh, yeah, very nice class um, and a lot of important points. And I like the point where we have to finally, whatever we do, we have to please Krishna and Guru uh, constantly and thinking about in that direction. And also, as Namrata Mataji said, so we have to remember. And you said that uh, in even in sleep also, we have to remember, uh, say that we are the servant of Lord Krishna. That is our identity. Yes, Mataji. Thank that's you so much. True. Very nice. That's true. Yeah. And we don't have to be bad. Oh, I'm not a big book distributor. Oh, I've not become GBC yet. Oh, I've not become temple president. Oh, I'm not zonal. Whatever level we are at. We just strive to do better. That's all. Because remember, Krishna is not looking for your, uh, you to have a big position and then he will reciprocate or you to have some great book scores and then no. Krishna reciprocates with us at whatever level we are offering service. The point is we should simply be sincere. Just like that little ant in Lord Ram's uh, you know, bridge building. That little ant was just picking up a grain of sand, but he was doing it so sincerely. So I'm just a little ant. Do very much. I don't have such an intelligence or strength, my dear Lord, but whatever little service you have given me, even if it's just cooking for my family, or even if it's just driving my child to school, even if it's just combing my kids' hair, even if it's just checking a homework, let me do that very nicely as a service to you. Because remember, in the end, it's not going to matter what material level you reached. What's going to matter is your devotional heart. Krishna sees your heart. He doesn't care about material qualifications at all. <laughs> it doesn't matter to him. So we may never make it to GDC, temple president, zonal head, this thing. We may never. But what's important is our devotional attitude and our sincere service. That's all that counts for Krishna. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a Vyasa glorification. Uh, I forget the Prabhu's name. 
but he was telling about his wife's departure. And he wrote in that uh, Vyas Puja offering to Srila Prabhupada that she never had any big position. She was just a simple, humble devotee. But after she passing was very glorious. And after passing, she came in the dream to tell him that this process works. Just chat, offer some humble, simple service, uh, have a devotional attitude, and Srila Prabhupada will help you to go back to Krishna. And so he said that, and she wanted him to tell everybody this. Because so many people are like us, you know, no position, no name, no nothing. They're just plodding along, trying to do a little something for Krishna. We may think, oh, what about me? You know, poor little me. I'm really nobody in his con. But Krishna knows who you are. And Krishna cares about you and your service. And that's what matters. Yes, so goodness. don't ever feel discouraged. Krishna is watching. He knows your heart and he will help. Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much. Yeah. All glories to share with us. All glories to our Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank yes. You. Glory, all glories to you. You don't have to feel discouraged. Guru Maharaj is so happy with your service. What are you worried? No. Blessings here. All Guru Maharaj's <laughs> mercy. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. I see Raj Prabhu, you can please go ahead. Um. <clears> Hi <throat> Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Mahaj. Huh? Mine, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Dev. And all glories to our poet, our exemplar. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Raj Prabhu. I, I could see so much. Uh, so much reality and truth that we're living and practically experiencing in, in your reading today. And when you're talking about uh, so citizens would willingly give one fourth of their income. And now when I look at it, or well, certainly in the UK, we have when I list all of the different taxes and government charges, the king is actually taking almost three fourths of our income. They're robbing us. They're robbing the citizens. And then like, so there's no, there's people can't afford to heat their homes, let alone give charity. And, and for energy giving time for Krishna, people, people were working so hard for that, that tiny bit of income that they get every day. And they go home tired in the evening and they, they have so many other household problems and other problems. And nowadays, uh, physical health problems and mental health, mental health problems are higher than they've ever been before. And so people are like at the end of their tether, they've been robbed, they've been attacked from all angles and they don't know what to do. They only, all they know is to carry on and hope for the best. And when we and when we like trying to introduce Krishna consciousness to them, we, and so many people are like, I have no time, I have no money, I can't, I can't cope with this, I can't cope with that. And it's heartbreaking to hit when people are saying they don't, they, you know, they're just like trying to cross the road or steer clear of the Hare Krishnas because because they feel they don't want to give a donation or feel that they don't have time to talk because they have to, so much to do. And when they when they say no to you, you feel so heartbreaking that because you know how they feel because you're feeling the same things as we're all in the same boat. We're all paying incredibly high taxes and we're all coming home tired. But we're, we're trying, we're getting a little piece of energy from the little piece of seva that we're doing for Krishna and Guru Maharaj. So we've got a little buzz of energy that we're trying to share with others. But yeah, I can see so much truth and reality in all of that. 
right and you know the 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 leadership has made it hellish you know you cannot <laughs> you call this life that you give 12 hours of your waking day just to get to work and slave away at a job you don't like and then again drive back two hours in traffic and come back and just such a miserable i mean that's not life that's not life that's just some existent, uh, existence at a very hellish level and therefore Krishna consciousness is really there to say don't be a donkey you know you don't have to struggle like this when your father is giving you green fields why does you know the donkey he just for a mouthful Srila Shri Prabhupada described just for a mouthful of grass he takes the beatings of the washerman and he carries heavy packs uh, loads of clothes from one point to another when there's so much green grass on the side he can just go and eat you know, when the father is providing so much, why do we have to become slaves of this system which is sucking our life blood and our life energy just for a mouthful of food? Is that, you know, even life? What is it? Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, human life is not meant for working hard like an ass. Human life is meant for self-realization. And Krishna will provide. Krishna is providing anyway. Why we should serve Maya when we can serve Krishna and get everything, live happily and nicely without being punished by the system just for living, just for breathing the air of that kingdom. <laughs> Is that ridiculous or what? Just days ago, Shina, uh, Gurudev said, going to work is human sacrifice. You remember? Mm -hmm. Doctor is human sacrifice. <laughs> Navrata was asking some question about human sacrifice and Guru Bhagavan said, all this is human sacrifice. We are sacrificing ourselves at the altar, you know, for them. Ridiculous. We have to value ourselves much more than that. And you say, my life is not meant for these people to exploit like this. I am meant to be going back home. I'm a child of God and don't you dare do this to me. Make a donkey out of me. It's up to us. Is really up to us. Mm. By surrendering to the pure devotee of the Lord, we must have the firm conviction that everything we need will come. We are not going to be left on the streets. Srila Prabhupada said, Krishna is not an ungrateful person. Krishna is the richest from man. Why will he will not give you? There's a saying in Hindi, I don't know if you understand Hindi. Jab Bhagwan does heart se denge, tum do heart se kya pakroge? Or Bhagwan jab does heart se lete, tum do heart se kya rakhoge? When Krishna wants to give you with his two hands, what do you be able to hold with your two hands? Huh? And when Krishna wants to take away with his ten hands, what can you hold on to with your two hands? So when the all powerful Lord is saying, you just surrender unto me. I will take care of you. I will wash off all your sinful reactions. Why are we sitting and chewing our nails and hesitating? Do you see the point? Mm, yes. And even the Bible. You remember the story of the prodigal son? You know that no. story? No. The prodigal son? It was the son of a very rich man. And he went astray and he wandered away and landed in one problem after another, one problem after another, one problem after another. And finally, he came to a situation where he was literally living in a pigsty. That's the place he was given to live and offered scraps for food because he was reduced to almost the position of a beggar. And as he was eating those scraps and living in that pigsty, he started remembering, wherever I come over here, I'm a rich man's son. I have come so far down and now I'm living in the pigsty with these pigs and being thrown scraps of food like a beggar. Let me go back to my father and beaten up and, you know, ragged clothes and dirty hair. He somehow struggles and comes back to his father's place. And the father has been waiting for his son to come back knowing that this young man has, will suffer tremendously because of his stubbornness. And he welcomes him, saying, finally, you have come, my son. And he orders the servants to clean him up, to bathe him, to put fine silks, and to give him good food and say, my son is back, my son is back. 
So Krishna is like that. A loving father wants to give us everything that we need to survive. He doesn't just throw us in this material world and say, okay, tough luck, do what you like. He's the provider. He's the maintainer. He's the well-wisher. Why he will not provide for us? Why he will not protect us? So we must have this conviction that God, my father, just remember your own father and mother. As a little baby boy, did you wake up every morning and say, mommy, 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 give me food. Mommy, 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 take me to school. Mommy, 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 give me a shower. Your mother out of love did all those things for you. Huh? And just an earthly human being with her limitations, she, she did, I mean, I'm just assuming, she, I'm talking about just usual mother-child relationship, everything for the child out of love, earthly parent. Why will not our eternal father and mother take care of us, their children, when we engage in devotional service? Why will they not take care? You tell me. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada said, Krishna is not ungrateful and he's a very rich man. We are sons of very rich men. We don't need to work. <laughs> when people were accusing devotees, oh, they don't work, they don't say, yeah, we don't need to work. We are sons of rich men, a rich man. Yay! <laughs> 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 nice. Thank you. Thank you. We lost your voice, Shrimati Mataji. Oh, oh, what's happening? <laughs> now is back. Hare Krishna. Uh, Revati Mataji? Yeah, yes, Mataji, we can hear now. Yeah, thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shla Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Revati, please accept mine. All glories to Shila Prabhupada, all glories to Gurudev. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji, for the very beautiful class. Uh, uh, so many instructions, uh, practical instructions you gave us. Uh, thank you for that. So, Mataji, uh, just uh, uh, looking at the purport, so I just wanted to understand you have explained it. Uh, but uh, here in the purport, it says, like, talkativeness can be avoided by gravity and silence. And uh, by proverbs, uh, one can avoid fearfulness. Um, could you please explain that, Mataji, a little bit? Uh, how can we avoid, uh, you know, by prowess, one can avoid fearfulness? Uh, Mataji, we cannot hear you. You're on mute. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, talkativeness means unnecessary talking. Talking about Krishna is just fine, but we indulge in all kinds of silly talk, which is unnecessary. So instead of that, we practice gravity. That means we become very serious about Krishna consciousness and we practice silence. Silence means we don't talk of anything other than Krishna and Krishna's devotees and Krishna-related subject matters. We don't indulge in mundane talks. So that is the meaning of that. And by prowess, one can overcome fearlessness, means taking action. That means engaging in seva, doing something. We are always anyone when they try to do something new, they are fearful. Hmm? We become anxious, we become stressed, we become worried, we become fearful, especially something called performance anxiety is there for all of us. Oh, how will this come out? How will I do at this? Will it be a success? Will it be a failure? This, that, like this. That is natural. It's also to some extent in, you know, conditional response. But once we attempt to do something and we do it, then we acquire a sense of mastery of accomplishment. And as we keep doing it, we become proficient and we no longer have fear of that anymore. Then that service comes easily, naturally, nicely. We become expert at it because we have been doing it every day. We have been practicing it nicely like that. So prowess means engaging devo in devotional service and doing it nicely to please Guru and Krishna. And that will grant us fearlessness because we are attempting it and Krishna will see that sincere attempt and he will help us. So prowess means going forward and 
showing capability and doing something to engage ourselves, our talents, our skills in devotional service. And Krishna will reciprocate by granting us, say for example, you know, uh, Guru Maharaj told me very early, I remember, cook once a week for the deities. Oh, I was so frightened. Of, I was like, oh my God, entering the deity kitchen and cooking one offering for the deity. How am I going to do this? Because the time frame is there, you know, you have to finish the offering on time. You have to do the transfer. You have to put everything on the plate, carry it to the pujari. I mean, it's like, this whole thing, you know, so I was like, oh, this is so frightening, this is so terrifying. And for the first six months, every time my day came, I was so frightened. <laughs> that happened. But I never gave up because I knew Guru Maharaj wanted me to do this. So somehow or the other, I was pushing myself, pushing myself. And slowly, slowly, my fear left me. I was no longer so afraid on that day. I was quite happy eventually to do all the things. And later on, people would tell me, oh, this sabji was so nice. You make the best, best puris, this, that. But that happened over time. You know, it didn't happen immediately. But I did not give up because I knew this is what Guru Maharaj wanted. So yes, we will all feel fearful, but we will gain prowess huh? by following the order and instruction of Guru. We will become fearless. Don't worry. Thank you, Mataji. So... I really like that point, which you said, taking an action, taking an attempt to do it, right? So even though, let's say you want to do some devotional service, you really want to do, but you're like uh, fearful that you cannot do it. You might end up doing some mistakes. So still we have to take an attempt, even though you end up doing mistakes, still you have to take an attempt. So right. that was a qualification to do that service. Right. And as we do it, we will become more and more expert at it and we will no longer make mistakes. We will no longer be fearful. And you, who knows, you will start training other people in that very same thing that you were afraid of because now you have become expert at it. Okay. You know, there's a saying, feel fear and do it anyway. You know that saying, feel the fear, but do it anyway. So you cannot block your feelings or you cannot pretend not. Yes, you admit. Yes, Krishna, I'm very fearful. Please help me. Please help me. Please give me good intelligence. Please let me remember your holy name. I would chant all the time. From the time I started showering to go to the kitchen, from that point I would be chanting, chanting, chanting. I would be, you know, first, you know, pray to Guru Maharaj. Oh, Guru Maharaj, please help me. I'm driving to the temple to do this service. I would be chanting all. I would be chanting while driving. I would be chanting while locking the car. I would be chanting as I entered the kitchen. I would be chanting as I selected the way. Jan, 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 all the way. I could not do it any other way. It was too frightening for me. So it will make you more Krishna conscious. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mataji. That's a very practical answer you gave. Yeah, definitely. I'll try to like that. And I also like the point you said, always think like I'm a representative of spiritual master. So you have to be cautious wherever you go, you're representing your spiritual master. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Alert yes. of our consciousness too. Yeah. Yes. Very good. yes, very good point. Yes. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Revati. Don't Thank worry, you. your name Revati, not for, uh, for a very good reason. <laughs> Revati is the concern of Balaram. So don't you worry. You will be a spiritual warrior before you know it. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Um, Sakshi Mataji, you want to ask Krishna? Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj, and all glories to all the devotees here. Hare Krishna, Sri Devi Mataji. Very nice to see you again, once again. So, Mataji, very powerful class um, and the purport as well. Thank you so much for this. Uh, nectar uh, which you have given us today and uh, I was you know there are three things in this purport which uh, brought to my attention one was the energy 
that you know we have to the energy what we have is been given by god and we have to uh, we have to channelize our in this energy which god has given in the service of god so that was very powerful yeah, and how we do it and what way we do it um, is something which individual devotee has to work out but that is something very very uh, uh, powerful in this uh, purport. The second is that I have a question, Mataji, is that every action which we do has to be towards serving of Lord Krishna. But I have a very simple question is that I go to work and I go to work because I have to earn money. Now money is Maya. So how is this particular activity towards the service of God? In fact, it is taking me away from uh, you know, serving God because it is finally Maya. So I have this question, Mataji. There are some activities which we do, which we cannot, you know, directly, uh, you know, uh, say that it is towards the service of Lordship. Right. Okay. If first, please accept my humble obeisances, my dear Sakshi. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to a wonderful Guru Dev. All glories to the association of devotees. Uh, first, I need to uh, inform you, money is not Maya. Money is an energy of Krishna. She is Lakshmi Devi. She is uh, very, very powerful and very much needed for Krishna's service. Srila Prabhupada never, uh, you know, shunned away from money. He said, bring it on. I will use it in Krishna's service. In fact, when um, Sadhguru Maharaj, he was a social worker, and the temple in Boston was just beginning or something. And everybody had joined up the temple and all. And Satsarup Maharaj was the only one who had a job. And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, go to work and give your earnings to the temple. Like that, he guided many Grihasthas also to continue to hold down a job. He told Dayanan Prabhu, you hold down a job and give 50% of your income to the temple. So money is not Maya. Money is just an energy of Krishna meant to be used in his service. But if we put money, Lakshmi, before Narayan and chase after her, then we are in Maya. <laughs> so using money in the service of the Lord, nobody stops you. Nobody denies that you have to earn money to uh, have a home, to have food, to drive your car, to have clothes, to have medical health. We need money for those things. So nobody is saying that you should not earn money. What is the most important thing is to understand that whatever job you have, do that service very nicely to please Krishna and use some of the fruits of that work. That means use some of the Lakshmi you're getting in the service of Krishna. You can buy bhog, give it to the temple, or you can make the prashadam at home and distribute the prashadam yourself. You may buy you know, certain small books and decide to distribute those books free of cost to people. Use some part of your earnings to serve Krishna. That's all. Money is not Maya. Money is an energy of Krishna and meant to be used in his service. So don't ever think, oh my God, I'm going to work. I'm earning money. I'm dealing with money. So what? So what? There's no harm. There's nothing wrong. It's needed. Just remember to use some portion of it in Krishna's service, whatever you can afford. That's all. Thank you so much, Mataji. This is what is it. Because, you know, you do, we are always thinking about money, how to earn more money so that, you know, it will be for the future and for, you know, our family and everyone. So that was the reason that is like, you know, we are always preoccupied about um, work about earning and you know our own subsistence so that is the reason why which is like taking us away for that moment away from God thinking about God so that was my question no, so that's yes. why no 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 it's very important to have a financial plan so that you're not constantly worrying about money that's not a thing you need to have a financial plan in place. I need so much for expenses. I need so much for savings. I need so much for emergencies. I need so much to take care of my old parents or whatever your commitments are. You know, you, you have a financial plan in place so that you have peace of mind and you're not constantly worrying, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then you decide out of this, all these necessary expenses, what can I spare in the service of God? You may not be able to give 50%. 
but you may be able to give 10%. You may be able to give 5%. And just see how Krishna reciprocates with you as you start doing that. You will find that when you give 5%, Krishna will give you 20% back in some other way. Then you will feel more excited. Oh, next time I will give 10%. It's Krishna is very loving. Whatever we give to him, he returns it many, many, many fold back to us. You give Absolutely. Him time, we have to be grateful. Yes. Right. If you give him energy, he will give you more energy. You give him money, he'll give you more money. So Krishna is very loving. We are never the loser when we give Krishna something. We are actually the gainer. That's why highly intelligent people... They give a lot of money because they know Krishna will give them more. <laughs> of course, we should not do it with that motivation in mind. We should just give sincerely. Then whether Krishna gives or doesn't give doesn't matter. But in general, Krishna is very, very pleased with, to reciprocate with his devotees. Yes, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Nice to see you, Sakshi. Hare bol. Yes, same year. Hare Bol, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. <clears throat> Yeah, Namrata Mataji, you want to go ahead? Sridhar Mataji, is it okay? Um, we have still time. Yeah, right? yeah. Yes, we do have time. Yeah. No Namrata Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, just a last moment, quick question. Uh, Mataji, uh, about Varnashram Dharma, um, I, want, uh, I wanted you to suggest some uh, a good book uh, if which which gives a good explanation or which gives a good understanding of, of Varnashram Dharma, if you, if you can suggest. Yes, there's a very good book by um, Hare Krishna Dasi. It is actually titled Varnashram, Varnashram and I don't remember the rest of it, but the title has the word Varnashram and it's a really great book, compilation of all the things Srila Prabhupada spoke on Varnashram, especially farm communities. Uh, what's the name? Hare Krishna Dasi is the authoress. She's Srila Prabhupada's disciple. And uh, hmm. there's a free PDF download of that book also somewhere on the net. Okay, I'll try to find the link and send it to you. But that's an excellent book to read. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. Please. I'll try to find the link for you. But it's called Hare Krishna Dasi is the author. And uh, Scarlett is making some signs. I don't know. She's on one breath. So maybe you can type up if you have found something. Let me see if I can type it up. I think she is telling to forward it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll forward the link. If I uh, yeah, please put it in the God Family Group, Mataji. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. I'll find it and send it to you. Okay. Yeah. I'll Thank send you. the link to you. Mm -hmm. Mataji, um, as uh, Revati Mataji was... Um, asking that question and you were sharing about how you were doing the service of um, temple. I am also, I just want to share my realization uh, in this and uh, experience. <laughs> Recently, um, you you remember, you must have remembered that Kurmaraj mentioned in a uh, couple of times in classes that uh, everyone should do temple service at least uh, two hours per week. So yes, yes. I, took it, <laughs> I took it very seriously and I connected to temple. Um, now and I asked uh, Mother Manjwali uh, to give me service. So, but I was so afraid um, to go to temple because it's one hour drive and it's a long drive and uh, one way, one, one hour with a lot of highways <laughs> with full traffic in Dallas, that traffic is crazy. So I was always fearful of the traffic and uh, driving. Um, but somehow I, I, <laughs> Because of the service, I have a strong desire to connect to temple and do some service there. So I finally started going to the temple once a week um, now and uh, doing service, Mataji, going one hour, coming one hour. So, yeah, somehow I took um, uh, courage to do that and uh, Krishna is helping me. I am always, as you said, said so by the time I get ready to the temple <laughs> and coming home, I am always praying to Radha Kalachanji. 
please please save me in the traffic and <laughs> don't give much traffic <laughs> the roads should be clear enough to go fast like that i pray and uh, <laughs> yeah yeah it pulls so, us yeah. closer to krishna because we are so desperately afraid <laughs> that we just pray to him all the time and this is needed we have to break past our little you know shells and comfort zone and go ahead and do what guru maharaj is asking because he is saying it for our good it's uh, you know, an austerity and it's definitely difficult nobody says it's easy just see now how much you are chanting how much you are remembering krishna how much you are begging for his help how much you are begging for his... would you have this much level of uh, Uh, attention and focus on krishna no if you were just sitting and coasting along you would be like oh well but now you are like oh, 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 krishna i have <laughs> yes mata ji <laughs> so yeah we have to take a risk for krishna shila prabhupad said take a risk for krishna and then we grow because of that yeah yeah very nice very nice i'm very <laughs> here that you are connecting like this and it will help you enormously to blossom and grow in krishna consciousness and in turn you will help to mentor other people to you just down the line you will be encouraging others just see very nice hari bol keep up the good work shivati very joyful to hear this Shrimati, after I spoke, you have been speaking, but we cannot hear your voice again. I can only hear, see your lips moving, but no sound. I think you have come on again. Can you speak something? No, no sound. she's saying i i'll try to fix this today mhm mm mhm mm okay so maybe because it's a struggle for her now to say anything i can request everybody if anyone has any questions this is your chance otherwise we can end the call yes she's saying the same thing we will end if there are no questions so is everyone happy <laughs> <laughs> okay if there are no more questions we will end the call and tomorrow is guru maharaj's vyasa puja 29th of september so we pray that all of you are able to honor glorify celebrate of a gratitude of a homages of your life guru maharaj <laughs> once again <laughs> so thank you all very much i am so grateful so grateful to guru maharaj for this wonderful god family for the wonderful shelter of his divine lotus feet that nothing i can ever do will will ever help me to repay that debt but i am very grateful all the same hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna, hare krishna. thank you very much thank you very much thank you Thank you. Vancha kalpa tarupya cha kripa sindhu gayi vacha pati ta naam pavani bio Vaishna vibio namo nama Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mata ji, for this wonderful class. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. Yes, puja celebrations for everyone. Oh, we see Sri Krishna Chaitanya over there, stalwart spiritual warrior in Dallas. Thank you for coming on and giving us your darshan. <laughs> Hari bol, very happy and joyful Vyas Puja, very auspicious Vyas Puja for all of you, and thank you all so very much for being my God family. Hari bol. Hari bol. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Hari bol.